Legend of the Four Horsemen After seeing James almost lose his life to the lava pool, the four became extremely cautious. They were quietly moving around when they suddenly heard an awful cry for help. All four ran towards the shouting and found a shelter surrounded by bulletproof glass. Inside, scientists with white lab coats were banging on the glass, hoping for someone to rescue them. It turned out the White Rider had kidnapped and imprisoned medical scientists from around the world here in his castle. He wanted to slow down the development of coronavirus vaccines, and what's more, he forced the scientists to create more and more powerful and dreadful viruses. Gemma used her saber to break the glass and release the scientists. They were all very grateful, but still anxious, so they quickly thanked the team and left this cursed place. After rescuing the scientists, the four youths walked up to a room with a door carved with some sort of battle on it. Standing out from the carving was a mighty knight on a pale horse rearing up. This must be an important room, said James. To avoid any booby traps, they stood far back from the door. Gemma swung her saber and a holy light lit up the room. It flashed and smashed into the door. The door blasted inside the room when from everywhere, thousands of arrows shot out. The Crusaders quickly joined hands and created a force field defending themselves from the deadly arrows. After completely blocking the arrow ring, they entered the room. Torches alongside the wall blazed into life all of a sudden, lighting up the room where they could see treasure chests filled with gold and silver scattered everywhere. Is this the White Rider's vault? gasped Sam. Michael quickly scanned around the room. He frowned, blankly sinking into thought for a while before saying, The White Rider probably has another vault for his viruses. We have searched the whole castle, but found almost nothing. Why nothing? Don't you see how the plagues have killed millions and put hundreds of thousands out of work? The future will be filled with poverty. This treasure could be used to help so many people, replied Sam. Michael shrugged. He didn't want to argue with Sam. What he wanted was to identify the origin of the virus, making the pandemic go away. Only that would solve the root of the problems. Sam flung her bell up. It expanded a hundred times larger, sucking in all of the treasures inside before shrinking back to normal. Gemma looked at the bell and joked, It won't just eat all of the treasure, will it? It can even suck you inside without losing a single hair, Sam happily replied. The jokes helped diffuse the tension that they were feeling. They left the castle and planned what to do next on the way out. Do you guys know about the legend of the Four Horsemen? asked Michael. Gemma and Sam shook their heads. Only James answered Michael. The Four Horsemen, who will bring forth the cataclysm of the apocalypse with conquest, famine, war, and death to purify this world of sin? Michael nodded. Then he told everyone the mythical legend of the apocalypse. The dawn of Judgment Day would be the day a white knight riding a white horse spreads diseases and plagues all across the world. Then, after him, a knight in a red, fiery cape riding a red horse would appear. The Red Rider would cause suspicion among humanity. He would make humans turn against each other 
igniting the spark of war. The Black Rider would come next, with his dark horse and a pair of scales in hand. He would spread famine across the land. And finally, the Death Knight, the symbol of death itself, would appear as just a skinny old man on a pale horse. But when death arrived, the death of humanity would begin. The bell of the apocalypse would be rung. Gemma and Sam were terrified when they heard this. They only knew the White Rider, the one who was wreaking havoc all over the land. They didn't know after the White Rider brought his plagues, there would be famine, war, and death still yet to come. We can't just stand by and do nothing, Sam yelled angrily. No, we can't, said Gemma. Her mind was still on the four horsemen, and also the tale of how the White Rider once took her mother away. Her mother wasn't in this castle. Then where was she? Was she still alive? Gemma worried. Humans can commit sins, but they can also do good deeds. Humanity cannot be destroyed. God created day and night, good and evil. Mankind was his creation. We cannot let humanity disappear into the darkness of the night. James looked at his three companions, his voice lowered, determined and steady. The four left the White Rider's castle. When they stepped into the city, a chaotic scene left them speechless. The goods in the stores were all gone. People fought each other to stash food and toilet paper. Lines and lines of homeless tucked themselves into cardboard huts, hoping to survive the cold night. On the sidewalk, a homeless man was begging for money and food, but his bowl was empty. Everyone was walking away from him. No one even glanced in his direction. Mister, I am starving. Can you please spare me a nickel? A skinny young boy walked near the homeless man and asked. He gazed at the child, hesitated for just a moment, then pulled out a piece of bread and a one dollar bill. Take this, it's all I have. The child took the bread and gnawed on it instantly. Sam turned to Gemma. There it is. The rich were too busy hoarding their food while the poor at least have the decency to share. Gemma nodded. Her eyes encouraged Sam. Let's go help them. Sam slowly walked towards them and placed into the bowl of the homeless man a gold bar the size of her hand. The homeless man looked at her. He was shocked, speechless. This is for you, and please, help another too. Th thank you, he mumbled, still filled with shock. That was the reality of the big cities. The more luxury and wealth shone on the outside, the more suffering and poverty was hidden on the inside. Subscribe now to my novels to enjoy a journey of the best mystical, magical, and mysterious stories.